down to the Prophet, people asking the Prophet for something, saying, Oh Prophet, give us this. Oh Prophet, give us that. But we never do that. In fact, if a person asks the Prophet directly for something, that's shirk. Okay, so once again, you could probably help elaborate on this. On one of the things I've read recently, it said that um, while you're doing your prayers, you need to mention the Prophet at the beginning, the middle and the end. What's that about? Are you asking him for it? Why is he in the prayers or your worship towards God? Why, yeah. why is he constantly there? Yeah, a very good question. So the thing, why, the reason why the Prophet peace be upon him is really there or he's there regularly is because like I said, the commands are from Allah and they're being shown by the Prophet peace be upon him. Yeah, so the vessel and the, the medium is the Prophet peace be upon him. So his importance is significant because if he's not there, <clears throat> then how do we get the Quran? Then how do we get the implementation of the Quran? It is through the Prophet, but the commands are not from the Prophet, they're from Allah. No, no, but I understand that. But why is he in the beginning, the middle and the end of the prayers? Why does, why are you worshipping the Almighty One? Yes. Why do you need to keep mentioning the person who gave you the rules from him when you're worshipping the One? Yes, that's why I'm confused. because firstly, this is a honor that's been given to the Prophet peace be upon him, that his name be called with the name of Allah, because the Prophet peace be upon him is the chosen of the messengers. Sorry, I'm sorry, but Go isn't ahead. that associating partners with him? Not then? necessarily. In the same breath, you're saying Allah is amazing. You also have to say, and so is his Prophet Muhammad and blah, 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 no, whatever no, no. you say. If you're, if, according to what you said, if we're saying Allah is amazing, we're not saying Allah is amazing and the Prophet is amazing. Allah has his own attributes. Allah is called in a certain way and the Prophet is appreciated in a certain way. Sure. For example, we'll say, um, I testify that there's none worthy of worship besides God. Now, if you worship the Prophet, then the same should be said about the Prophet. However, the testification of faith is, I testify there's none worthy of worship besides God and I testify that Muhammad is a slave and messenger of God. Okay. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, no, so no. They, they put together in the same declaration, but their roles are distinct and their, their importance in society or, you know, the hierarchy is made absolutely categorically so clear. Is it similar to when Christians are praying to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ? Would mm. that be equivalent to that? No, because, because they're not praying to him, they say in the name of the messenger you send, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that's to do with like intercession and that's like a... Intercession means... Uh, well, like a Vasila. Intercept between you and the Lord. Oh, Lord God. yeah. Okay, so because for them, if they only accept Jesus, that will be sufficient for them to go to paradise. Yeah, but the same thing for you guys. No, if it, we just accept the Prophet, but we oh, deny no, no, God... No, no, in regards to my yeah, question yeah. at the beginning was, uh, sure. if I believe in God, one God, Tawheed, if I live a righteous life, but I don't believe Prophet Muhammad was the very last ever Prophet. I don't get to heaven. Yes. I have to believe in him. Yes. So then that becomes similar to the whole Christian idea of, no, you have to believe in Jesus Christ in order to get to heaven. He so, becomes an intermediary. Not necessarily. This is a condition of faith placed by God. Yeah. So God is saying, there's none worthy of worship, like obey God, obey uh, and fo follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You have the messengers there, you have the angels there, you must believe in them, you must believe in the life. So there are certain articles of faith. Those articles of faith, when you accept those, you are classified as a Muslim. If you do not accept those articles of faith, you are not a Muslim. So that's the... You can if you want, yeah. I've said that so many times. I've said that so many times. <laughs> it matches. <laughs> Remember to take it. I will, I will. So yeah, over there, mm -hmm. when it comes to when it comes to Jesus, they actually worship Jesus. Yeah, they share the characteristics of God with Jesus. Here, they, there's a complete distinction. One is a God, one is a messenger of God. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not is not mentioned other than a prophet, other than a messenger. That's all it is. Yeah, we don't. We're not allowed to worship him. We're not allowed. But but bear in mind also because based on what you said, we can't be a Muslim unless we follow the Prophet. Why? Because the Prophet 
is the one that's the medium for us to get that information. So to take the Prophet out of the equation means that you cannot now get information from God. No, so, so we'll ignore the whole they Christians believe that Jesus is God because I'm not coming into that at the moment. What I'm talking about is the fact that they say that Jesus is the shepherd to lead his sheep. So he's an intermediary. And no, sh shepherd as a guide, there's no issue with somebody being a shepherd. Yeah. But to say that that person is a shepherd and now worthy of worship. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm not saying worship. That's what I said. When sure, they sure. do their prayer, they'll pray to the Father in the name of the person. Not always. Nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, what some people do, we can't attribute to No, the most thing. people believe that Jesus is God. I've met a lot of Christians who don't. No, the, the vast majority they, yeah. they, 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 believe they that they're... So that's Catholicism, I think, mainly, especially, because they also pray to Mary. That's, that's the majority. The majority yeah. of the Christians believe Jesus is God. That individual is God. Yeah, but that's not the way it should be. We, we could both agree that that's not the way the Bible is written. Of course. Written. Well, it's uh, what the, they've interpreted the, it as. So what I'm saying is... Well, that's their belief, that's their theology, yeah. that's what they're predicating their faith upon. Yeah. Whether we want it or we don't, we have to look at them and what they say, and that's the claim that they make. Yeah, but we also have to look at the book and see what it actually does say. And they believe and that the book does on. say that he's God. Yeah, but... I'm sure you've had the conversation. I'm sure you've had conversation with Christians where you've pulled out verses and you've gone actually over here. Of course, of course, I don't. But I'm telling you that the vast majority of Christians, yeah, but that's what they we, believe. But if we look at the verses, which correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Yeah. But the verses that they have in the book that doesn't say that, that actually says that a where he says, um, "I worship the Father, like you worship the Father." When he says things like that. You use that to disprove their credit. That look in your book, it says this is what you should, should be doing, but you're not doing it. Yeah. So I'm saying on that basis, on forget what the majority. Hey, we're on the same page. Wrong. We're on the same page. Yeah. We 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 don't believe that Jesus is God. We don't believe no, no. in that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, but the like I said, the idea is that they pray to God using Jesus' name as a mediator, and you guys pray to God using Muhammad's name as a mediator. But here's the thing, though. We are not, number one, we're not praying to the Prophet. No, so, no, where are you getting this from that we're praying to the Prophet? Well, it's not praying to the Prophet, okay. it was more while you're praying to God. Yeah. You're using, mentioning him. Yeah, you're mentioning him. So, like what? The, like the Christians do. No, I'm, but. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. So, here's the thing there are certain praises of God that you can say independent of the Prophet. Yeah. For example, Allahu Akbar. Mm. Subhanallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll translate this. Yeah. Yeah. God is so, great. Allah, Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Subhanallah means glory be to God. Alhamdulillah. All praise be to God. Even La ilaha illallah. In the, in the hadith, it says that the supreme of zikrs, the remembrance is La ilaha illallah. Okay. Yeah, which is there's none worthy worship besides Allah. Yeah, yeah. So there's many remembrances of God that His name is there by Himself. Mm. Even every chapter of the Quran starts with in the name of God the most kind the most merciful mm -hmm. there's no mention of the Prophet Muhammad there no, peace no, be upon perfect. him do you see yeah, yeah. so we don't it's not always the case that whenever Allah is mentioned the Prophet is always mentioned yeah, yeah. however the honor is given to the Prophet that his name is mentioned alongside the name of Isaiah I think listen of the fact that you actually do a lot of different interviews and you probably had something planned. Something. We will, but I, I didn't want to leave you high and dry as well, isn't no, it? No, no, no. I, I got my answer. I was happy. Uh, I see, we're good. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah. So, so yeah, bro. I mean, I this question is important for me to understand because yeah, bro. It, this this notion that, to be honest, it, again, it's in the sun again. No, it's, no, no, no. Oh, it's good. For it's the good, yeah. Yeah, because okay, we were yeah. probably in the dark because we were facing that way. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> So messy enough. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so yeah, bro. Like we we don't we don't worship the the prophet peace be upon him. I can understand, and I'm glad that you're kind of holding it under scrutiny because stuff like this should be held under scrutiny because even in Islam as well, the wahda near the oneness of God is a very important and integral principle. 100%. And that's why you're you're kind of demonstrating that. I'm glad you're holding it to scrutiny because if we claim that it is and that's the reason why a person can be eternally damned and the likes and surely it should be held up to scrutiny so no, yeah no, so true, because it's it gives a better understanding not just for myself but yeah. for the other people who are muslim who probably didn't have this question in their head yes it, it answers lots of questions for different people so this is why i'm like so sorry going back to what we were just saying so jesus is the prophet 
I'll, I'll also give you another example as well, yeah? So the Prophet, peace be upon him, his uncle Abu Talib didn't accept Islam. Okay. Yeah. Now, if he was somebody to be idolized, like he's this guy is perfect in every aspect and this, sorry, not guy, I mean, the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a prophet, then his uncle didn't accept Islam. His son passed away when he was six. You know, his um, you know, wife passed away and, you know, the likes. So, so the thing is that perfection, complete perfection is only for God. 100%. Prophet peace be upon him came as a practical way for us to live life. In fact, Aisha, his wife says to the nearest meaning, that he was a practical implementation of the Quran. Mm. A, a good analogy that I give is like, you know, when you have to assemble like an Ikea cupboard or shelf. Yeah, yeah. Those pictures, bro. <laughs> They're not that complicated, are they? Sometimes, bro, they can be really <laughs> tricky. So having someone there, if a guy that knew what he was doing okay, was there yeah. and saying, you know what, pick that screwdriver no, there. No, no, for sure. Some people are read, uh, read and learn. Some people have to see it physically to understand it and learn. You know so what I mean? I, I, I completely understand that. And I think that it's a good thing to have a prophet with the book to say... This one? Yeah. This? Okay. Hey, yeah? Uh, they clash, isn't it? I got you, I got you. So, yeah, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I completely understand that. They, you need the prophet there to kind of show the way for what the book actually says and how to live your life. But that, the point I make is just simply that, once again, for me, the big issue is saying that he's the last prophet ever. Yeah. I've, I, I've recently found out there's like seven Aruf. Is that the Aruf, word? yeah. Aruf. So, see, I mean, I'm becoming Arabic without even knowing it. I've learned so much. Uh, the seven Aharuf. Yes. So, I don't know if this is true, but I think possibly in one of those Aharuf, it may have been worded slightly different. Instead of saying that he's the last prophet ever, it could have been he's the last prophet for Islam, like I believe. The, the two the two Kira'as that we have of that particular verse, both of them say the same thing. What's a Kira'a? Kira'a is what's derived from the Aharuf. But there's seven different ways, seven out of. Mm. And I was told that um, you don't have, so the uh, Qur'ans nowadays, they're only in one out of, right? Mm, so the Qur'an that, yeah, that, that's the Hafs Qira'a. That's, it depends, yeah, the Hafs Qira'a is, is the main one. The, no, so this is a comp, like if you really want to get into this, yeah, yeah, you, this you, is, your, your brain's going to get frazzled. Uh, give it to me. Okay, so there's, you've got Ahruf. <clears throat> they say there's at least seven Ahruf. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the Ahruf, there were certain words that the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, via revelation, yeah, Allah allowed that the Prophet allowed certain words to be read in different ways yeah, for, no, for, for certain individuals. That allowance is called Ahruf, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all it is. So there were certain allowances that were made, mm -hmm. yeah. And then afterwards, now let's just say one word, you've got Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that's a lot of words. Yeah, Ar-Rahman, <laughs> then, you, then you've got Maliki Yomiddin, then you've got Maliki Yomiddin. Yeah, so these are two ways that you can recite it. Maliki Yomiddin or Maliki Yomiddin. Yeah, so and then as it Do goes... Do mean literally the same thing? It's pretty much the same thing. See, that's, but, that's, the, that's why I'm a bit confused with the pretty much, because like I said, I believe yeah, when that I say pretty much, no, 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 I, I, when, when I say pretty much, I'm, I'm just being academically honest, in the sense that the translation is not completely different. For example, uh, Master of the Day of Judgment or King of the Day of Judgment. Mm. That's that's the extent that it will be. Yeah. So you've got the, the, the subject matter, the Aqidah does not change. There is absolute unanimity in this. There's no sect that will say otherwise. Mm. Yeah, that the Ahruf do not change Aqidah do not change belief. And here with regards to finality of the Prophet, that's Aqidah, which is called belief. Fundamental beliefs has much more rigor, rig, um, rigor in Islam than say uh, another field does, because this is the most important thing in Islam. So yeah, there's no belief. way that... So there's, my theory there, is yeah. that one of the Aruf was... But that's why I'm saying that that, that sentence that is it used, been true. Yeah. The, the, the other way, so the way is that he's the last prophet for how, how so, do you say? So Khatam al-Nabiyyin and Khatim al-Nabiyyin. Yeah. 
So these are the two kiras, yeah? Seal of the prophets and what was the other one? Final. And final prophets, okay. yeah? So both of them, you can see seal and final, both in terms of the aqidah, both in terms of the belief mean exactly the same thing. However, in terms of the way they're pronounced, for certain people, it, it caters for different people that can't say Khatam and Nabi. So, so they so will say Khatim. Seal. So what's the translation of the seal one? So seal, according to the Mufassireen, according to the dictionaries, all of them imply the end, final, no, nothing afterwards, kaput, kapish. I want a bit more explanation on that because like Solomon had the seal or something like that according to Jews, I think he had a seal. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, okay, so how can you say that? Yeah, he, Solomon had a seal and then Muhammad has a seal and then... There's a difference between a person having a seal and a person being a seal. Okay. Yeah. Seal, being the seal means you're the end. Having a seal would mean that, okay, what is that seal? Is that in the form of a ring? Is that form of, you know, you know, st stamping something or doing something or is it on his staff? So that's that seal. So his seal was not in terms of prophethood, no, nor did he claim, nor did his scripture claim that he was the seal of the prophets. So seal of the prophets so what is, so categorically means the end. Wouldn't this translation sim be similar in the sense that Muhammad was the seal of the prophets, like a stamp, like the ring or whatever? Why is it that it has to be the last prophet ever, like a seal on a lid? Why is it that, not the other? Yeah, because if you look at the way the Arabic is structured, there's a difference between somebody sealing something, yeah, and a person being a seal. One's a noun, and one is a verb. Yeah, so was he a seal or was he sealing? Yeah, so the prophet is the seal of the prophets. So he's the verb? It's um, the, no. The verb is the doing thing that you're referring yeah, to. The other one? Yeah, the other one, it, that's the noun. Noun, yeah, so yeah. he's the noun. So he's not actually verb as, he's not sealing prophethood, he's the noun. Yeah, the prophet can't do the sealing, only Allah can do the sealing. Yeah, but you said that he was the seal. And, and when we look at seal, and when we look at verses of the Quran, number one, we look at its apparent meaning. And number two, when we're unsure about that, we look at other verses of the Quran. We look at verse, then we look at our hadith as well in commentary. Yeah, but I don't like our hadith because uh, I'd rather focus on the Quran. If the Quran is the perfect word of God, I'd rather trust that than witness statements. Because that's why we don't, well, I'm guessing that's why you don't believe the Bible. Because the Bible is just witness statements of Jesus Christ. The Bible is unsubstantiated witness statements. Regardless, there's still Not necessarily, statements. because the hadith are substantiated witness statements. Yeah, but not all of them could be 100%. This is why you have to have the different grading levels. Yes. So you, you understand yourself that even though that they're witness statements, they're not going to be 100% accurate. There will only be a certain level of accuracy to it. So this is why I personally prefer to go stick to the Quran. If, if we are claiming Quran is perfect and it is the word of God, Let's stick to what the Quran says rather than adding, oh, this person in this hadith said this, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. We can stick by that. But let me tell you the principles yeah, within Islam, which is that when we derive laws, we derive it from Quran, Sunnah, Ijma and Qiyas. Ijma and Qiyas. Yeah, so Quran, then you've got Sunnah. Yeah, no Sunnah. Yeah, ijma. then Ijma, which is consensus. Okay. Consensus of the companions, consensus of the scholars, yeah. and then you've got analogical deduction as well. Logical deduction. Yeah, okay. analogies. Yeah. Uh, analogical deduction, sorry, not analogies. So, so these are four principles. So, uh, hadith comes number two. Yeah. Now, how we get hadith and the grading of hadith, etc., etc., that is an integral part of Islam. Like, the Quran will give you principles, it will not elaborate on those principles. Yeah, but for example, the Quran will say, say... Sorry, but you can't say it's integral when the Quran doesn't specify the Hadith. The Quran says, yeah, you've got to follow the life of the Prophet, which is the Sunnah, which I understand. But it doesn't say the Sunnah and the Hadith, because the Hadith was obviously come around afterwards when people were like, oh, what does this mean? What does that mean? When they were asking the Prophet's companions... But that's, that's why we had the discussion, that's why we had the discussion earlier, isn't it? Um, of testifying Allah and testifying about the Prophet peace be upon him as well. And because the Prophet peace be upon him, Walaikum salam, because the Prophet peace be upon him is the medium, he is the one that's showing us 
his words are very important and they do need to be meticulously preserved. However, if somebody argues, okay, this or that, yes, they are being preserved by man. And yes, there are opinions, but to disregard all of hadith, that's false as well, because the grading of hadith, there's ijma, like when it comes to Imam Bukhari, his sahih, that's the third principle that I said, Quran, Sunnah, ijma. Ijma has been done that after the Quran, yeah, yeah, that consensus has been done that after the Quran, Bukhari is the most authentic book. After that, you've got a Muslim. Then you've got Ibn Majah. No, I understand yeah, that, yeah. but if you look at the modern so, world today, yeah. if we were to go by consensus on the majority of people, they'll say that Israel has a right to do what they're doing. We have to understand at some point, some people can be brainwashed, some people do have uh, no thinking skills or whatever. So we have to try and look at, this is why personally, I prefer to stick to the Quran itself, because if that's the word of God, there is no if, but, or maybe, that's what but one, that's yeah. what the Quran says. This is why, like, I don't. I understand consensus is important, but you have to also understand that consensus can be manipulated. Like I said, if we look but, at but in today, order, but in order for somebody to say that consensus is manipulated, you need to bring something credible. I, I don't need to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm not. I'll I'm give you an example. Manipulate. I'm saying. I understand. Let, it let me just answer your point. Back at the Quran, what does the Quran actually say? I don't want to talk about what this person said or what that person said. Let's talk about what the Quran says, because then that way we don't need to worry about consensus. We talk about what is factually in the Quran. Yeah, you understand? We, we can stick to the Quran. Yeah, that's no problem. But I remember I said that I'm giving you our general position as well. OK, so yeah. Okay. So our general position encompasses the fact that you you do have authentic hadith. You do have mutawatir hadith, mass reported hadith, which is akin to the Quran that has mass reported chains as well. So mass reported chains are of the highest value. To, now to say that stuff can be manipulated, etc, etc. There has to be evidence for that. Now Israel, the thing with the Israel thing that, that you've raised, it's very clear there is evidence for that. You can say there's lobby groups, there's clear hypocrisies that can be seen. There can be, you know, contradictory no, no, so I, I statements. I, I think they're in so, the wrong, so, so I, I agree of course, that, of but course. Just, but what I'm saying well, most is, most of the people in the world won't be saying that. But what I'm saying is that pertaining the chains of narrations, it takes all of what you've said into consideration. Yeah, it, the name, family, tribe of the person, the honesty, where they studied, you know, who they studied with, where they were, and all that sort of stuff. Were they accepted in their community? You know, were they reliable? What did they say? Did somebody else verify that? So the hadith process, I don't want it to be kind of misconstrued or yeah, even compared, compared to say the Bible or compared to say other sayings, because let me tell you something. When it comes to the hadith literature, there's no other religion that has something similar to the Isnad and the hadith science that the Muslims do. I have no idea about that. You could be right, but the, look, look into to that. Me, it's, not, it's not important because if we've got the book it's not, of truth. Listen, listen, listen. It's not, li listen, listen, listen. The reason why it's not important is because, like you said, you don't know. And because it's been recorded and you can check it afterwards, maybe it's something you can research into and then you might think differently. That's all I'm well, saying. Look, the reason I say that yeah. is, once again, so if we were to look at the Israel Palestine conflict again, I don't want to keep bringing it up, but unfortunately, it's the most relevant example I can think of. Yeah, yeah. If you had Israelis who had all given witness statements and those witness statements were then verified by other Israelis and those Israelis were then verified by other Israelis, at some point you're going to go, yeah, they're sticking up for each other. It's not that it's 100% true, it's yeah. that that's the narrative that they want to push. Yeah. So this is why I understand where you're coming from, but when all these uh, lineages of authentication are all Arabic and they're all around the same time and all around the same people, I can't just go, yeah, 100%, I believe that. I have to look at the truth, which is, according to you guys, the Quran. That's why I always stick with the Quran only. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate why you guys do what you do. But personally, as a non-Arabic, non-Muslim, I have to understand that I'd rather focus on the Quran itself and what it says. This is why when you said the whole seal thing, being a noun and a verb, a noun... That was an example. No, no, no. But yeah, yeah. I was saying that the way that the words are used that is akin and that needs to no, 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 also be taken into consideration when looking at 100%. the, the so usage the, as well. What was the fourth thing you said? So the third thing was 
consensus. What was the fourth thing? Uh, analogical deduction. That one. So using that one with this thing that you told but me about it, But it seal, comes in hierarchy though. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying, because logical deduction, when you're just using the Quran no, ana only, Analogical deduction. Analogical. Yeah. What's analogical? For example, if something happened at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, a, a fly falls into your food, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, um, one wing contains poison, one wing con uh, contains this antidote, so therefore dip it completely in, so both of them yeah, neutralizes, yeah. and then, you know, that's fine. So today, obviously, we're not all living in the desert. There's other creatures that fall in. So scholars will then use analogical deduction and say, okay, what other insects follow that similar pattern to that fly as well? And they will take an analogy okay, and say, so okay. More analogy than logic. <coughs> well, they both. Well, can you do one without the other? Uh, I don't know, that's a good question. I have to think about that one. Yeah. But the point I was going to make was that the seal, because the seal thing I think is really important. Um, the seal thing you said is either a noun or a verb. That's so, not what I said. I'm reiterating because obviously it's been recorded. It's not to do with noun or verb. I gave an example. No, 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 no. One is one is sealing something. And one one is a seal. seal. Yeah. And I said one is like a verb. One is like a noun. Yeah. I'm not going into that with regards to this passage of the Quran. Oh, no, I wanted to go into that passage. Yeah. That's why. That's so why then I'm we need to go I, I, into. I want to know is that word that they use a noun or a verb because I think that's an important distinction to understand if the interpretation has been maybe misunderstood. Not necessarily because the noun or the verb is not necessarily going to change the meaning over here uh, in, in this position. I think it would because Be I, could, I could agree okay, Let me give you an example. Okay. The way because what we're doing is we, we're using the English parameters and we're applying it on the Arabic language. Mm. So pertaining this verse, the only way we can accurately, you know, break it down is by analyzing sarf, nahwa, and that's Arabic. Yeah, that's morphology and lexicology, okay. and that's Arabic, and that's out of my remit. Okay. That's why I'm not. Uh, th that, that goes on to another point, but Do I'm not see? gonna make it, otherwise the conversation will go on yeah. forever. But. So le lexicology, morphology, and that sort of stuff. But at the, at the very simple nature, it's any time we want to understand the Quran, we look at Arabic, yeah? And then if there's a bit of confusion, then we look at the Quran. The Quran does, does the seer of certain words. So we look at um, explanation, yeah? So if you don't know, okay, what does this word mean? Look at the, re uh, in the Quran, how has that word been used yeah, elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can understand, you know, where it is. Then we look towards the explanation given by the Prophet. Then we look at the explanation given by the companions. So there's a hierarchy of stuff. It's not as simple as, oh, it's a noun or it's a verb, because nouns and verbs in the Arabic language have, have a different weighting than they do in English. I merely gave you an example of how the word seal can have, in, in the English language, it can be used in two different no, ways. No, I understand, but unfortunately, but, you yeah, also yeah. kind of back my point up, which is that it could have possibly meant that he is the last prophet of Islam, but it's turned into he's the last prophet ever. But we already because, discussed that though, isn't it? No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, because that's my biggest point with Islam. There's, I, there's I, nothing I other than Islam though, that's the thing. No, no, Islam means submission. So I agree there should be nothing other than submission to God. Yeah, submish, submitting your will to God as per, uh, and following the prophet yeah, but, of the time. Not following him as in doing exactly what he did, but following him as in he had a righteous life, so you have to be righteous. That is where I would see, this is where yeah. I think wording is important and understanding is important yeah. because I've seen people do street dawah, that, that's the right word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've done preaching on the street and they've converted someone in two minutes. How is this person that have only just heard about Islam, who's only just heard about Arabic, suddenly a Muslim, someone who submitted the will to God. How do you know Without that? doing the history, because you just said that Arabic. Now, how do you know that it, it, it's only taken two minutes? I'll give you an example. I've spoken to some people, they've taken Shahada very quickly. Yeah. But upon asking them, they say, most of my life I've spent with Muslims. Yeah, yeah. Most of my life I've spent in a Muslim country. So I've, I've learned stuff. But like you just said, Arabic is a very complex language and you have to look at four or five different things in order to understand the translation of one word. In order for no. someone who doesn't speak Arabic to take their Shahada, without doing years and years of study first, because I think that 
becoming Muslim is a good thing in the sense that you submit your will to God and you work a righteous path. I, I agree with that 100%. But when some people are just trying to convert people and get numbers rather than quality, I think that there's a disconnect there where you're not actually getting someone to become a Muslim, you'll be getting them to just believe in this identity and they're, and they're just doing identity stuff then. It's not actual submission. So well, I think that, there's a really... Well, I mean, that you're, you're questioning the intentions of two different groups of people here. You're currently questioning the intention of the person that's accepted Islam, assuming that he's only accepted Islam based on two minutes worth of research. Yes. And you're questioning the intention of the person that's giving da'wah, that he's only doing it to rack up numbers. Yes. So, I mean, that's that's a very far-fetched, to be honest. And really? I mean, you'd have to evidence that. Bro, I... I even the Quran dives into that. No, no, I'm sure he says... Yeah. Uh, the Quran says a lot of things that people still do. But the point is that like I see people going, oh, do you know what? Islam's the fastest growing religion. Yeah. It's this, it's that. And they're using it as a tactic to get more com converts or reverts, because you guys call it reverts. This is why I say it's not about numbers. Like, half these conversations here is like, oh, do you believe in God? Do you believe this? Do you believe that? Oh, you're Muslim. You might as well just say you're Shahada. Become one of us. You get the brotherhood. We'll back you up. And Which is true, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. It's a good thing. Brotherhood is great. It is fantastic, especially when you, like you said, keeping each other sharp and trying to learn as much as you can is great for that. But I just believe that in order to really truly submit your will to God, you have to do more than just five minutes of research and just know a few Muslims. Because I've known Muslims all my life and most of them aren't actual Muslims. As in what's what's your name? Daman. Daman. Yeah. The man. So, the, the man, man. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> Damon. Okay, Damon. So the the thing is, ev everybody's got a different. Um, Come on, Zisha. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the man. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the, you know the you, different people have a different barometer of evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and different people, and, and that's the thing with Dawa as well. <clears throat> Some people, they they already believe in God. They actually, for them, like I met certain people. They said, bro, it doesn't really matter how many evidences you give. It depends on how I feel. Yeah. Now, whether you agree with that, whether you disagree with that, whether there's quality, whether there's no quality, different people require different forms of evidence. So some people, bro, they literally have one obstacle that's preventing them from believing in a God. Some people, being in a Judeo-Christian society, they believe that, you know what, God is like this, so he's like man, he's this. But having the option that, you know what, God is not a man, God is independent of, you know, creation. Yeah, it, it, creation and the likes. And you know what, textual criticism is a thing, etc. You don't need to speak to them for very long. For them, that will be enough. However, for some people, they've been traumatized because certain religious figures have acted in a certain way. Yeah, for, for certain people, they've been around non-practicing folk and they need, you know, rationalization. Why would they I work? Agree. Everyone's got an individual yeah. case. So that person that's come with two minutes, that's what I'm saying. I've spoken to these people and they say, you know what? I've been around Muslims and you know what? I just didn't know this particular thing. Or I didn't want to take my Shahada because, you know, uh, I don't want my parents to find out. I said, bro, you can take it in secret. Your parents don't necessarily have to find out. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. Is that, is that allowed? I said, yeah, of course it's allowed. Here yeah, we just have two witnesses. We do it off camera. Boom, it's done. Yeah, and then it, it's a map. Why do you need two witnesses? Because there's, there's many wisdoms and, you know, many uh, reasons, but the ones that come to my head at this current moment in time is, let's just say the person passes away. <clears throat> in a non-Muslim society, uh, burials. Like, there's been cases where certain people have argued this person's not even a Muslim. Okay. And then you need witnesses. In Islam, the presence of witnesses is brought forward to present an argument to prove to produce evidence pertaining a certain thing. Okay. Or you see, yeah, you, you, you've seen the moon. Okay, well, who else has seen the moon? Do you have any witnesses? Yeah, I've got this many witnesses. Or this happened with regards to this particular thing. Okay, are there any witnesses? So it's a form of evidence to back up no, no, the veracity no, no. of that particular For me, point. It was just a bit surprising because I thought when you were doing each other, God knows what's going on in your heart. So that's he does, what, and that's why certain well, people I take. Yeah, 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 because there's, when it comes to burial and even when it comes to certain things. Uh, even when you're in an Islamic state, so there's different rules for, say, a Muslim than a non-Muslim. A Muslim will be held to a higher standard than, say, a non-Muslim. Yeah, that's fine. That, was yeah. A, that was a side point I was just yeah, wondering yeah, that's, about. That's fine. But carry on. What was the point that we were saying before? Uh, you were saying that there's different uh, levels of people where they've got different experiences. Yeah, exactly, bro. So that's that's what it is. Like, your thing it is going to be different. Like, 
obviously if we off camera maybe we sat down uh, you've s spoken to certain people and maybe they've given you an, an inadequate answer or an inadequate philosophy like you're saying that you're claiming monotheism but you're worshipping the Prophet how do you square that circle? No, not worshipping, it was more idolizing. So Idol, yeah, which is a form of worship. Yeah. 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 In this in this yeah. regard. So yeah. so that's that's the way it is. That different people will come with a, a different kind of issue or a knot that needs to be untied. You, uh, I can speak to somebody about philosophical reasoning and that person that, uh, fr frankly, I'm not interested in that. Why do bad things happen to me? I, like one of my friends, he said that he, his, his, uh, he lost uh, his daughter, miscarriage, mm -hmm. and he said. Then he lost another daughter, and that was enough for him. He was like, "Look, I, I have to like, now regroup now. Like, w w why is this happening? W what's the point of all this?" And he started looking into the other religions, and he started looking. For him, it was the problem of evil, yeah. And which religion has the best answer for that, and which is the most convincing? He found it to be Islam, and then he said, "You know, Alhamdulillah, I've made Alhamdulillah means all praise be to Allah, I've made the right." decision and that was enough for him because for him bro the the evidences and this and that he says i just look around that's enough for me to believe in a god like it's not really difficult he says when i look at the complexity but and the design the believing in god isn't yeah. an issue for me because i think that's no but that's sense. no but, but that's what i'm saying thinking you you find that but, but that's what i'm saying that when you believe in god and then you say that okay you believe in a god now which of the books would be the most authentic there needs to be a certain criteria preservation yeah maybe numerical miracles maybe prophecies so there are certain criteria to determine which book is from god yeah and once you've determined which book is from god bro and because that's that's where the disjunct is that i've noticed with you that there's not you're not really convinced that the quran is from god no, and i know I, I think it's from god but i just <clears throat> don't think like i said for me, the issue is in the uh, Quran. I think that we should use the Quran as the as the uh, measuring stick, which is important. My issue is with everything else, with the whole. Sometimes. Do you believe every single word of the Quran is from God? I've not read the entire Quran. No, do you believe it is? Because you said you believe it's from God. So this is what I was about to say. So I believe it is the word of the God, the word of God. But the way it's being translated or the way it's being interpreted. I think is can be an issue. So some people, like I said, may have said uh, Muhammad is the seal of God, meaning that he's a prophet. Seal of the messengers. And yeah. another one would read it and go, no, that means that he's the last prophet. Mm. As in, that's God sealing it up. So for me, that's yeah. where the line is a bit blurry. That's why I have these conversations, because I want to yeah. try and get a more definitive answer on why you believe he's the last ever prophet, not just it is because it says it is. Because I think I said that to you last time. That was one of my issues with the Sikh religion. Yeah. When I questioned it, people were like, oh no, you believe it because that's what it says. Yeah. I want to know why it doesn't say what it says. So I believe it's the truth, but the way mankind is, the way mankind always sees what they want to see, I think that there's a, a chance of a disconnect from the truth. Because for example, look at uh, Jesus. Then, well, then, one second, sorry. So just to make this point, because this is the, the main part of your argument, isn't it? I, I don't want to detract from yeah. it so soon. So your issue, correct me if I'm wrong, is pertaining the seal of the prophets. So then that's the next time we have a discussion, that's where it needs to start from. The seal of the prophets. Yeah. yeah. So the verse of the Quran pertaining yeah. the seal yeah, of the if prophets. We, if, if, I, if I'm lucky enough to meet you, then yeah, that would be great. <clears throat> because that's that's your main thing. That's your main contention, yeah, 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 isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah because that's, like I said, for me, uh, the, the Sikh religion, I think, makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, but to pick one over the other, I'm not going to because I think they both come from God. Uh, so my point was just going to be this. Yes, because uh, you said earlier about um, people who finally decide, oh, I do want to worship God, which book do I follow? My answer is that Jesus didn't follow a book. He was given revelations and stuff like that and he was able to find the truth. He didn't have a book, and he was then able to teach the prof. Uh, the, what was his? What are the people who called him? Uh, disciples. He was able to teach his disciples things and get them to the next level, and they were able to go out and do miracles. And they didn't have a book. So the idea of that you have to have a book is kind of lost on me because I don't think you need to have a book. It's important to have the truth, but you don't need to have. Jesus a book. did have a book. He was he was given the Injil. What's the 
the Injil was a revelation was revealed to Jesus. Well, uh, they call it the Bible nowadays, but that's... The I mean, Bible the, nowadays is... Uh, it's what Matthew Mark... Yeah. It was a witness statement by Matthew Mark. Yeah. Whatever. So those aren't actual words that were given to Jesus. Those are the words exactly. that he may have said. <clears throat> but they wrote down. <clears throat> but we know for a fact that Injil was revealed to Jesus. Yeah, so... A book was revealed to Jesus. Yeah, but it wasn't a book. It was knowledge that was then turned into a book. Yeah, potential book. Yeah. So those people didn't have that book at the time. They just asked they did. questions. They did. They would become... So they did. Because then the precepts were taken from the book, isn't it? We, it's, it's like when Allah says, we reveal the Injil to Jesus. How else other... So they had Jesus, they had the Injil as well. Mm. <clears throat> it's the same even with the Muslims as well. We had the Prophet, peace upon him. We had the Quran as well. The Prophet showed us the Quran. It's the same with the prophets. They showed their respective books to their people as well. Yeah, through so, implementation. Well, that was, that was so the book was needed. The, it wasn't a physical book. It was the knowledge. The Injil would have been a knowledge. The Quran was knowledge. And this is why it wasn't a book that they just handed. It was something that he had to recite and other people remembered. The books were compiled. They were actual books. What, God gave a book to... No, they were revealed and then they were compiled yeah. in book form. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it was knowledge that was given to them, which was then compiled into books. Yeah. So. The Injil would have been, because it's the Bible, would have been witness statements of what Jesus said, of his knowledge that the Injil... No, the, the Injil were words of God revealed to Jesus. Mm. That's what they were. Later on, they have become witness statements, etc, etc. And, you know, let's add this bit I in. I call them a hadith, but <laughs> I don't think it's like that. Not necessarily, because hadith have chains of narration. They don't have chains of narration, bro. Just the, okay, it's just the change of narration. In fact, thing. even John, they don't know which John it is. Okay, no, no, but the fact is that you can, they're finding, uh, yeah, we've been going on a while. Do you want to move on to something else? We can do, yeah. What? Maybe next time we yeah, can have a yeah, yeah, we'll proper conversation. Yeah? Or if I do find you online properly, we'll do a uh, Zoom thing or a Skype thing or I don't know. We'll, we'll you just come to speaker's corner, it's easier, isn't it? Well, I just thought, because you were stretching your legs a little bit, no, I don't no, want to keep you, because no, okay. I could do it for days about this stuff. No problem, no problem. But it's really so good. It's a pleasure, I appreciate you demand. spending this time with no, me my and pleasure, wasting bro. your film on me. No, I mean, it's it's questions that do need and answers. this man, and he's, he's been waiting for ages. Asshole, asshole. He's been waiting for ages. How you, brother? No, 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 of course not. Of course not. No, How are you having it? Of course. You can hear that bit. Uh, I don't care. Yeah. Muslim? Alhamdulillah, Riva. Yeah, see, this, Alhamdulillah. Will, this will be an easier conversation. Yeah. Hey, everybody. So Thanks again, man.